Talking with people with music in their genes, their blood, and in their soul. You are watching Musical Interlude. Hello and welcome to another episode of Musical Interlude. I am your host, Casey Bell, and we are here today with John Dorsch. Let's get this show started. Okay, thank you for coming on the show. Um, the first question I have for you is, when, if you can remember the age you were when you first discovered either your passion for music, your talent, your the idea of doing music. Well, music was always kind of, uh, it was always, always there. I kind of, I grew up in a musical house. My my mother would sing. I remember her singing at a very young age to me and everybody would sing and, you know, even in different languages. I had a German grandmother and she would sing in different languages. And about the, uh, the age of eight, um, they bought me an accordion. So I embarked on, you know, a journey of playing accordion for about four years till I was about 12 years old. That was, that was their idea of what they wanted me to do. And um when i when i you know saw different television shows and i i got really interested in pop music of the day like the beatles and you know monkeys and anything that was happening on on tv that you heard which was really exciting and um my um my mother's sister i guess my uncle brian he was a a great uncle and he took me um and exposed me to some new great great experiences so his uh, his brother larry was in a touring band in kingston ontario he was the drummer and, and they were a really good band. I didn't know anything about music at the time. So so he took me under his wing and he bought me my first record album, which was Kiss Alive One, and uh took me to his house and he had a John Lennon's three quarter size Rickenbacker guitar and I'd never held one before an electric guitar and got to sort of make noise with that through his big amplifier and and then he took me to uh see his brother's band. It was a full rehearsal with lights and sound and they're a fabulous band. Um, playing like Toto and all the big songs of the day, like Journey and you know Led Zeppelin and all all that stuff. And they actually, this, the, they were so gracious that I, I could barely play a couple of chords on the guitar, but they had me play along and put uh, a, a real Gibson Les Paul in my hands. And that was kind of it for me. I was like always wanted to play and be a guitar player and make music and you know be in a in a band. So that's where it started. So. Um... How do I ask this? So before we started, you mentioned that you were a police officer for 31 years. Um, what made you, like, at what, did you know you wanted to music before becoming a police officer? And um, what made you choose to be a police officer as opposed to starting a music career? Well, that was uh, that was a kind of a, a difficult decision. Um, I've always been a community, you know, oriented guy. And, you know, I have a lot of empathy for people. and. And I worked at a facility when I was 17 washing dishes. It was a home for, you know, developmentally disabled. It was a, a large hospital. So I got to see a lot of, you know, people that were less fortunate. And I always kind of was community service minded. I always wanted to do something to help, you know, those kind of people. Right. And um, my education took me, you know, into engineering and, you know, parents wanted me to be an engineer and, and do all that kind of thing. I always wanted to be more arts oriented. So it was a bit of a, a bit of a breakaway, you know, I did one year of engineering, did all that, and I took a year off to finally be in a touring band, wanted to make a go of it on the road in, in Canada. So for almost two years, I was like the guitar player, you're playing Van Halen, and whatever was going on at the time, and the whole northern Ontario, all the way down to Toronto bar circuit. And uh, after two years, like the whole bottom out of that, you know, you could actually live on the road and that's how I supported myself. We weren't making a lot of money, but we were having a lot of fun making our own music and playing to large crowds. And then all the touring thing kind of fell apart and um, it, there was no, the places weren't able to pay anymore. And, and it was, uh, you know, the, the support for live music kind of fell out there. There was a lot uh, going on. So at that point, I couldn't support myself and my father goes why, why don't you become a police officer you'd be great at it and i considered it before and i thought you know what i need something to fall back on i'm going to just have to work both these together i'm just going to do that for now so so that's what i did I, I worked at it took me about two years to get on the job so i kept playing music all the way through my life all the way through having wife and kids and 
and eventually in uh, the Durham Regional Police, when I first started, it wasn't a good thing to, to be a rock and roll guy. It's like, you know, we're, we're really conservative in the police force. And, you know, and then the community orientation and reaching out to different groups and things started to become a good idea in policing. Um, Canada was a little behind the United States. And um, I was, I ended, we, uh, a band formed with the uh, Durham Regional Police called the Cruisers. So it was a rock and roll band. And we played in uniform and uh, played for all kinds of community events. Big Brothers, uh, Run for the Cure, uh, fundraisers for when the when the Twin Towers came down. Anything that goes, we we're we we're we we're probably the, you know the flashiest free band you could ever get, and it, it really helped the police officers' image because we were we we're out in the community and people got to know our faces and made our life, made it made it easier for to to do our job. But we also got to play guitar and sing and you know play all those great songs, right? So always managed to find a way to do the two together and. Uh, and, and here we are now, after a while, you, you have to retire, right? You can't do that. It's a younger man's job. And uh, now I finally got to, to get back in, in full-time music because it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot to put out an album and uh, and do that. So that's where we're at now. So in your you creating your new album, um, what inspired you did you did you have an idea that once you were done becoming a police officer you would go back to music or did it what inspired you to go back to doing music well it it never ended um i always had one or two bands that i was playing in all the time so uh about five years well, it was around 2015 I'd, I'd been writing songs and i was trying to find um a singer i could collaborate with and and work on that but that i tried that and it was unsuccessful so after after a while i learned you really just have to rely on yourself so so instead of singing backgrounds i i just started at that point i took vocal coaching and i um and i just started working my own my own voice out and and playing through my own songs you know and and just making it happen <laughs> so so that's where it started about then and I'd had another two bands on on the side generally pretty much it was a cover band and then there was one where I shared the microphone with another another guy so I was actually doing the lead singer guitar player kind of thing in a rock band and then of course in 2020 the bottom fell out of the, the whole entertainment industry and there all the bands folded you know people lost their jobs moved away you know and uh, you couldn't find anywhere to play and a lot of venues closed so it's like at that point it became um well i'm not just going to be able to retire and continue on my my life as a musician and be able to do more of it i'm just going to have to redesign what, what's going to happen with music going forward so i thought this is a real opportunity i can finally actually just focus on it so what i did was i actually bought a uh an outbuilding at my house uh it's a, it was a shed we insulated it my wife and i i've, I've got a really supportive wife danny she's my musical partner and wonderful singer and you'll you'll find her on my albums she's my number one support system and so i built the studio here we insulated it powered it up it's got got everything in it it's where it's where i'm sitting right now this is where i made all my music i recorded the whole album myself learned how to do that i've watched countless youtubes to figure out how to do all that and you know recording properly and when i finished uh recording I was going to do eight tracks and I ended up having 15 because I, I, I don't stop writing anymore. And uh, I took it to a studio professional one in Ottawa and he mixed and mastered the whole thing and loved the project. So that's really, I, I did everything in the project completely except for mixing and mastering and putting it together. That's all my recording. I played all the performance of the instruments, except there's a couple of guest appearances on there to, with a mandolin and a bazooki. That was uh, Paul Johnson and, uh, Bonnie, uh, Bonnie Skiffin and sang some background vocals. They're dear friends, kitchen party friends. We sing and play in the kitchen with them. So <laughs> put them on my album. <laughs> so you somewhat already answered my next question. I know here in, you know, the United States, there are thousands of schools and colleges you can go to to learn how to write music, um, play an instrument, compose. Things they do not teach you is how to go into the studio, record, remaster, um, publish, make sure you're getting on the radio residuals and things of that nature. So you said you looked at some YouTube videos. Was there other things you um, 
did to research how to be in the music business? And secondly, did you have any fears because you didn't know, or did you just dive right in and figure it out? Well, I I wouldn't say they're say fears, but you know, I would say more concerns. Like, okay, I, I really should know a little bit more about this. I I've always had a pretty good business mind. Um, you know, I I watch my parents in in their home business, and there's there's it's like you have to take attention to everything that comes by. If you let it slip, everything piles up or gets missed. So so it's very much like that. You know, you know, I get email. I have to stay on things all the time, and because I I self promote as well. So it's like you have to find time to play your instrument and to write and then promote. And when I travel, I use that for, I have a recorder with me and I, I record my inspirations on there so I can later come in the studio and I'll play those ideas and I can actually work them and finish those ideas. So that's what we've been doing as far as that part of the business. But I've watched YouTube's um, with a band Zoodle site. They had a couple of tutorials there. I've watched different tutorials on, on the music business, what to take care of now how to promote your own music. Um, I actually have a promoter at the, at the moment. I decided to do that because it gets really deep really quick. You don't have time to, to play your instrument if you know, you know what I mean, if you're, you put out an album. So, so that's what we did. Um, and, you know, I wanted to work up a show because we're going to be playing all these songs live. So we have a show coming up in August. So I've worked up acoustic versions. So we're going to do a duet of the whole album even though a lot of it's uh, band oriented and there's acoustic finger style in there and there's some, some heavy tunes in there, we're going to have a nice intimate performance of all the album along with a CD release performance. So, so that's going on right now. Um, as far as uh, recording, um, I have a friend of mine, he runs a studio. So I've had you know pointers here and there. I've done recording in different studios. So I've seen how it works and I know, I, I know what works in, in the studio. Um, and you know that I've got a good microphone. Uh, there's a couple of good things. You need a good microphone and a good attitude. So, <laughs> so and uh, and a, a learning attitude. Any anything that happens, I think I learned to be this way. Whatever whatever happens, you have to look at it as a learning experience. You know, maybe I won't do that again, or well, you know what, that didn't kind of work out. So we're just going to take a different direction here now. It's a much more positive way of moving through life rather than you know getting down on yourself. You know. You, you, there's no point in doing that. It just works against creativity. And the idea is to have fun and spread some joy of it. You know, I want to do music in a in a joyful way that I can be proud of it. And I want I want other people to see it and 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 get something out of it. And I want it to speak to them on their terms, right? Whatever it means to them, that's that's what I would like to see. And uh, that's why I'm putting out the music. So you, a uh, few of your songs have won, um, I believe, a few awards. We'll talk about Dragonfly. It was selected for the 2021 City of Ottawa On Hold Music Program. First question, what is the On Hold Music Program? Well, the, the City of Ottawa, it's a city of about, I guess, 1.3 million people. Um, it's a quite some you know, metropolitan city, the capital of Canada, and, you know, it's all the federal government is there. It says a uh, big hub for tourism. There's a lot to see. Um, so anyway, the city, um, they put on different music programs and, you know, they have many, many events. There's large, you know, concert festivals all year round that go on the city. So they have a program for just the local area artists. You have to be within, I guess, 100 kilometers of the city and, you know, probably hundreds of of local artists can submit their original material to there. So um, those were my own mixes that actually won those spots. So I, I guess I must have been doing my own mixes not too bad. So because they have a panel of about 45 different industry judges, those would be the people that, you know, select bands for the large festivals or, you know, Parliament Hill or um, different, you know, there's a lot of agency talent um, management in Ottawa as well as Toronto and Montreal. In Canada, so so those people would have would have selected my song along with several others for this program. So if you called the city, and you know you go three one one, you call the city of Ottawa to, to speak to the mayor or, or whoever, whatever department it is, welfare, social housing, or traffic or whatever. If you go on hold, then you, you there would be a series of one minute clips of all of the thirty five songs that were picked that would play, and you would hear them if you were on hold for thirty five minutes. So if you know what I mean. So that would be played all the way in, in rotation for a whole year. So you get exposure 
there's announcement on the website and there's a playlist and you know you, you can play the songs off the playlist so you, you get some some promo from the city of ottawa and uh the other the other song um was save just one more life i wrote that it was a it was a very a very dark time um police officers were um ending their lives there was several of them in a, in a row and it, it was just a really sad situation because you know um if we, if we could just save one more life and that's what the song is about um you know hopefully the song reaches you know somebody and you know you need to stay alive one more day to have another look at it and, and you know hopefully you'll change your mind and you'll decide that life's worth living that kind of thing that song of it so that was another song that got successful and it was a year apart so those two songs are on the on this album um as as part of it so that was selected for the city sound so that song would have been played in the cityscapes they have you know like the ottawa buildings uh with like the subway or whatever it would be played in rotation and in background music in the same fashion like one minute per song kind of thing yeah me so any advice you'd have for someone who's thinking about stepping into the music business something you would have wanted to know yourself before you started well um it's it's life is what you make it um you know if if you're if you're you have to do this because you want to be an artist and you want to you want you want to be creative and you know it's it's good to take your talent and apply it to something i believe everybody has talent it's whether they apply it or not like you have to work at it there's nothing easy um i thought maybe you know some people were just gifted instantly you know like michael jackson or you know the the different people but i've met i've met these players they're they're they are so committed like you have to really commit to your vision and not let disappointment deter you, you have to look at it as another lesson that maybe you know you maybe push too hard or you know if you're practicing and making mistakes you're really just practicing to make the mistakes so you have to kind of slow down a little bit and be a little more careful of what you're doing it's like if i'm playing a guitar part if you start playing it fast and making mistakes what happens is you're just practicing that mistake so the speed the speed is a product of accuracy so if you want to actually play then you have to practice playing slowly and be patient with yourself and your development it takes time and and don't concern yourself with what what you think other people might be thinking they could be thinking about buying groceries and have a weird look on their face when they're sitting in front of you playing your guitar you know what i mean you don't know what's in people's heads they could be thinking about a terrible thing that happened to them a month ago you don't know what's happening with with the world so you just have to deliver you know your best performance whenever you perform live or when you're you know and 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 be a sponge soak it all up you know look for ins inspiration from everywhere that's what i do i find travel music um a great movie or something i'll be inspired and i'll feel like writing a song the next day it's just that's the way it is it wakes your soul up so you have to kind of look at it that way keep a positive attitude thank you for that my last question for you um and anytime i ask this question most people have a challenge time answering it so i will not rush you you can take your time thinking about it um if there is a musician out there dead or alive that you would have liked to or would like to collaborate with who would it be and why well i have a lot of uh my musical career changed a lot over my like i was always enamored by all the innovators of, of music first it was like john lennon paul mccartney like they're on the leading edge of music and then it was, you know, Jimmy Page, you know, Stairway to Heaven was was the first time I ever heard a great acoustic guitar in a piece with great electric guitar. All of a sudden it was like, wow, it's like the two kind of kind of came together. Folk music and rock music kind of came together. And that's what sort of started my my journey down there. It's like, you know, and then there's great songs like Dust in the Wind, fingerstyle playing. And I wanted to, I wanted to learn how to play that, but there was nobody around here to teach me any of that. And I eventually found my way to... Um, I guess it would be Tommy Emanuel and John Mayer, you know, watching YouTubes and trying to figure it out with these, you know, note lessons online. Unlike when I was a kid, I'd have to put pennies on an album and slow it down and tune my guitar down to try to make the sounds match. That's how I started by ear, but it's a little bit easier now. But, you know, with with that, I, I think, you know, I've I've 
played with Tommy Emmanuel at two different guitar camps. He's a, he's a phenomenal human being. He's a breadth of knowledge and uh, about all the industry. So sitting with somebody that's a professional musician gives you gives you a glimpse of of what it might be like to be a professional musician, right? And and the commitment and the practice it takes, right? To do that kind of thing and the showmanship. And it's a, if you're playing live, it's about entertainment. It's not just the music. You have to entertain people, right? So that's one thing I, I learned I learned as well. But you know, if I was going to sit down and have a meal with, I think it would be John Mayer, and only because I, I know Tommy Emmanuel, I know I know what it would be like because I've had dinner with him. But um, John Mayer would be an interesting cat. I'd like to write a song with him because I think he's he would be wide open to doing something just completely new. Which 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 really kind of inspire inspires me. Um, he's one of those guys that likes to likes to write uses uses influences but creates something brand new and very special. He's he's a fingerstyle player that that I I like to like to think I play fingerstyle the same way. But he also blends rock and you know blues and and all kinds of stuff. He's got a fabulous kind of mix there going. Um, I think he would be really interesting to sit and write a song and have dinner with. Oh, thank you. By the means, what is it all for? Why are we here? Is there one more life we can save? Don't be naive. Seems we're in separate places Sad excuses for phony faces Wasting time Life is sublime There's still hope for me In the path I see Course unknown For one another, not in anger or sympathy. Spread your love of humanity. Set each other free. Can we save just one more life? Hold on if you can. 
that is all the time we have for you today on Musical Interlude. I want to thank our guest, John Dorsch, for stopping on by and sharing his musical journey with us. And of course, you, the viewer, thank you for taking the time to watch. Have a good day.